Hey everyone, it's Ryder and welcome to another video. Oh, it's a cat? There we go. Hello, it's Ryder and welcome to another video. In this video I'm going to show you some of my summer reads. I enjoy reading, I don't get to read as much as I'd like to at the moment because of my master's degree, but I always try to have a book kind of going. So here are some of the books that I've been reading this summer. First one I got through was this, George R. R. Martin, A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms. I quite like Game of Thrones. I've read all the books. I didn't really get on with the series, but I quite liked the way the books were written. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to try this um, prequel, not really prequel, it's sort of little stories set in the same world that take place about 100 years before the Game of Thrones takes place. And I really enjoyed this because it doesn't require you to remember so many people. So you've got a lot less characters. They, they are from the same world as Game of Thrones. So if you know Game of Thrones well, you'll recognise some of these people as having been mentioned in Game of Thrones because they happened 100 years before, so it's going to be people's grandfathers and whatnot that are in this one. But it's not quite as important and this is sort of a little bit of a lighter read. Obviously it's a lot thinner than all the Game of Thrones books and it's got three short stories about Dunk and Egg in them. So Dunk is a hedge knight and he's not very intelligent but he is very tall. So he becomes known as Sir Duncan the Tall. And Egg, who is actually Aegon Targaryen, ends up being his squire. That's not a spoiler, it actually reads on the back of the book. They start travelling together and things happen. This book doesn't have the family trees and the maps in it. I think the maps would be very very helpful because the stories don't follow each other directly. So the first one ends up in, oh we're gonna go to Dawn now. And I was very confused initially when the second story started because they started off with, oh, yeah, when we went to Dawn, and I'm like, it happened? When did it happen? I actually really enjoyed this one. It's a lot more concise. If you're finding Game of Thrones a bit of a chunk, which I have to say the later books did kind of drag on a little bit, then this is brilliant. Or if you want to kind of have an introduction to the way George R. R. Martin writes to see if Game of Thrones might be for you, then this one's great. The next one I read was this one. It is Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. It's a, a modern novel. It's won Costa Book Awards in 2017. Sunday Times number one bestseller. And you've got an incredibly unusual protagonist in this. Um, Eleanor is a very very interesting character. She's got a very strict timetable. She likes to wear the same things every day. She will shop for the same items in the supermarket every week. She will have the same thing for lunch every day. And she doesn't really like change. She doesn't have really many friends. She talks to her mum and you kind of immediately get the sense that there's something a bit shady going on with the mum. You kind of just want to read it to understand the way in which she sees the world. This kind of captured me because I really like to see character development and I enjoy quirky characters. So this is definitely one if you're into that sort of thing. The next book is by Jonas Jonasson. It is a Swedish book. The English title is The Hundred Year Old Who Climbed Out of the Window and Disappeared. I'm reading it in Swedish because it's originally in Swedish. 
but it, there is an English translation of this. It's been translated into quite a few languages. It's a very, very funny book. And the title basically says it all. That's what happens, that's where the story starts. And he ends up being missing for a month and doing all sorts of weird things, meeting all sorts of crazy people. The whole book is sort of centered around stories, so it tells you Alan Carlson, who's the main character, the hundred year old, it tells you his life story in little snippets and then kind of relates it back to what's happening now. It describes loads of important historical events. He kind of goes through the entirety of sort of World War II and into the Cold War era and he ends up in America, he ends up in Russia, he ends up, you know, just about everywhere. So many random things happen and things happen very sort of deus ex machina. Just when they are in the trouble like this, then there is this person who knows exactly what to do and they are fine again. So he ends up basically being on a run and he's got the police after him, he's got a gang of criminals after him and he somehow manages to like find a group of people who ends up, end up on the run with him and you hear all these people's backstories and there's a lot of storytelling in this. They're interesting stories but initially I found it a little bit off-putting. It's, it's a little bit, it's not slow to start but some of the sort of historical retelling of his life is a little bit dull and if you have no interest in history this is probably not that interesting to you but I'm enjoying it now that I'm sort of I've, I've gone halfway now that's my marker there so I know I'm enjoying it. it's kind of picked up pace and I'm glad I struggled through the first few chapters it is funny and when you particularly if you understand the historical context of it it's quite entertaining and you realise how cleverly the book has been written. Loads of interesting characters in this one as well, actually. Right. Terry Pratchett, The Colour of Magic. I was recently in a production of God's God by Terry Pratchett and I decided, you know what, I need to give Terry Pratchett a go. This is the first book in his Discworld series. I tried to read... Actually, I have read more recent is... What's the book called? I have to double check this now. The Amazing Maurice and His Educated Rodents, which is sort of, sort of for younger readers, so sort of teenage age book. I have read that before, a long time ago, when I was probably about 13. I didn't really enjoy it. I was just like, this has got talking cat and talking rats in it. I, I, I wasn't into that sort of thing. And I think I've tried to read Good Omens before as well and that was a bit difficult to read. I think it may have been because uh, my English wasn't that great and I was trying to read it in English. Again, this was a long time ago. And my mum really loves that book. So I probably I ought to try that one again. But anyway, I thought, you know what, I'm going to give Terry Pratchett another go, especially because I'm doing a play um, based on his book, so I kind of ought to know a little bit about it. So I've gotten sort of halfway with this. I'm not quite halfway. Again, I'm finding this very sort of deus ex machina. Like with the last book, things happen very conveniently. I'm kind of just like, I swear I could have written that. And things are very random. I'm not sure I don't really like random. It's kind of like, Douglas Adams, like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galax Galaxy, you occasionally end up laughing because it's just so out there. Like, I mean, already here, you've got this huge chest with legs. What? I'm not sure if it's really me. And another thing I've really noticed about this, I find myself, because I'm quite a fast reader, and I find myself often kind of partly skim reading things. I don't do it intentionally, but you kind of sort of read the first part of the word and kind of assume the rest of the word, or if a paragraph's not interesting, you kind of, I find I get to like three paragraphs down and go, oh, 
I'm not sure I properly read that paragraph or I didn't take in that paragraph. With Terry Pratchett, this book is not thick, but you really have to read every single thing in this. Every single word is important. Unlike someone like George R. R. Martin, Game of Thrones, there's a lot that he could have edited out. I find that there's a bit too much blabbering in it. When your book is that big, there must be an editing issue somewhere in there. He has edited his book magnificently, but that has just made it so concise that it's quite challenging to read. And his language is very colourful as well. So for somebody who is not uh, fluent in English, I can see this read in English would be quite challenging. I'm not kind of getting into it. I've been told that when you get sort of the fourth book, it kind of gets into it a bit more and the first couple are quite tough. I'm sort of getting intrigued by this point. By the point I'm here, I'm kind of a little bit intrigued. At the start, I kind of had to just encourage myself. The print is quite big. If you have a look, so it's not small print. I think that's the only reason I'm still reading. If it was tiny print, I think I probably would, would have given up already. It's obviously a complete world of its own and he's created such quirky things to go in there. So I think I just have to see how I feel after this book, whether I'll keep reading it or maybe I'll slowly kind of start getting through them. So that's all for my summer reading list at this time. I always welcome suggestions of things to read. If, so if there's anything good that you've recently come across, then uh, do send it over to me and I may well have a look when I've finished what I've got on at the moment. Thanks for watching.